Hello everybody, this is Fred HK and welcome back to Guided Hacking. Today we'll be taking a look at the VKeylogger malware. VKeylogger is a malware that is being sold on different forums as a keylogger and loader bundle. The malware will connect to a C2 and upload logs that have been retrieved from the infected victim and then receive tasks to download second stage malware. Today we'll be taking a look at how to resolve the import table that this malware uses to try and obfuscate its imports and also how to use the RETSYNC plugin to sync up your debugger and your decompiler, in this case IDA Pro. Alright, let's go straight into it. To begin my analysis of VKeylogger, I'm going to open it up and detect it easy. And Detect It Easy tells me that it's written in MASM. This probably isn't correct, but it's a good indicator that the malware is native. So for native malware, I'm going to take it and drop it into IDA Pro. In IDA Pro, we see all of the correct settings. All right, now that we've decompiled the start function, taking a look around, we can see a few things of interest. First of all, what stands out to me is that there's a lot of calls here to a D word. Usually this indicates that there, are, that there are imports that need to be resolved here. And either when an import is not resolved, this D word will just be a reference to the hash value of where the import is. If I jump from the xref to this D word, we can see this function here, which appears as if it's resolving all of the imports for the malware. So I'm going to go up and call this function resolve imports. Then I'm going to see the xrefs of where this function is called from. And we can see that it's called within this function here and when the resolve imports function is called if it doesn't succeed then the this function will return zero i imagine that this return if used will probably exit out the malware because the malware can't act can't function properly without its imports resolved and i'm just going to call this uh import wrapper just because I'm trying to find this function later on when we go to dynamic analysis. And we can see the import wrapper is ran at the start of main. And like I surmised earlier, if the function returns zero, then all of this code will not run. And I imagine once we've, we've resolved our imports, this will be the malware exiting out. Okay, so I've gone ahead and opened my binary in x32 debug. And what we're going to be using is a plugin called RETSYNC. What RETSYNC will do, it will sync my decompiler here with my debugger so that as I step through in my debugger, I can see where I am in my decompiler, making use of both programs, which I find very useful once I have a very heavily commented and annotated code within my decompiler. It makes life so much easier to then know where you are within your debugger. To enable RETSYNC, what I'm going to do is just go into my plugins in IDA and enable hex ray synchronization. And we can see here that it's begin listening for a client. And then within my debugger, I can do the same and go into my plugins and enable sync. And we can see here that the sync is now enabled. So if I run my code within my debugger, we should see it sync within IDA. And we can see that here. So this yellow line will highlight where we are within the running binary. What I want to do is go through the binary that we're analyzing and step over the imports function so that some of these D words will get filled into real functions and we should see the output within my debugger change. So let's go ahead and do that. So what I'm going to do is step over until we get the call 
and then I'm going to step into this call. And we can see that my IDA window has synced to that. So now we're in the imports wrapper function. And we can continue stepping over until we get to the resolve imports. So this is our call to resolve the imports within the binary. And what I want you to look at is these D words here. These are going to be populated with the actual functions that the binary wants to use. And we can see that changing once I step over this call. Now that we've stepped over it, we can see the proper functions here. We can see calls to get module handle, get process heap, get current process, and so on. This will make our analysis a lot easier, but how do we get this output into IDA? So to get this output into IDA, we're going to make use of a second plugin called Scylla Dump. What Scylla Dump will do is it will dump the file and then it can automatically find, find the imports table and repopulate the dump with the correct imports. That way it will fix all of these D words and show us what functions they really are. To do that, we have the binary running here and we want to make sure that we've stepped over our call that will populate all of the imports. Once that's done, I can open Scylla. It's already attached to the active process and I can go ahead and do the dump and I'll dump that. Then I'll use this IIT auto search, which will get the import table. And that's found the import table here and I can click get imports afterwards and we can see that it's found a bunch of imports checking this if we go into win HTTP we can see some HTTP functions things in kernel 32 and so on this looks correct to me so then now that I've got all of the imports I can then fix my dump so I'll click on fix dump and go on my b2b dump and that has successfully rebuilt the dump. So now that we've fixed the dump, we can close out of these and reopen the executable. So now that I've reopened my executable, we can see that the, the decompilation looks a lot better. Uh, we can see how Scylla dump has annotated all of the arguments going to these functions. And scrolling through the malware, we can see what it's actually doing. Um, a lot of stuff like get token info, checking the SIDs, um, process versions, and so on. So this makes our analysis a lot easier of the malware. Um, you can now go ahead and actually start decompiling each one of these functions and taking a look without having to guess what each of the D words are doing. I hope that this video was useful for those of you that might be struggling with something like this. I'd like to do more of these unpacking and bypassing some of the anti-analysis techniques. So until the next one, goodbye.